Welcome back everybody. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to make signs and how to save them and proper formatting and stuff like that. I just learned a little bit of this myself, so I will include that knowledge as well. And anyway, let's get started. So you have two types of objects. One of them is a transparent object and one of them is a opaque object. I guess you can have semi-transparent objects. We're not going to cover those right now. Anyway, let's get started. Let's say you want to change a time on this sign. So I think the whoops, I think the easiest way to do this, you can do this a few different ways, but I am teaching beginners. And I think the easiest way to do this is export selection with files. And I like to keep all my signs in a separate folder. So that way I know where they are all at. And then I, well, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, so this is a opening times. So this is an opening time sign and we are gonna save it there. So we exported from our map into a folder inside of our map. And the reason why we did that is because it'll make it easier to import. Let's go into our maps and let's go into textures and sign edits is where we saved it. The mod object is right there. The, well, let's look at this for example. This is the object that we exported. If you open it up with Notepad++, you can see the extensions right there. I typically like to keep all the extensions in the same level just so I know that I am not accidentally having duplicates. And if I do have duplicates that I have them either different names if they go to actual different textures or if they are the same texture, then that way I am maximizing my optimization and not having unneeded duplicate textures. So what we are going to do is we also need to, did I not change these? Yeah, if you, I did. So if you change the location of those, you also need to change the file path here. And it is always in reference to this I3D file. So of course the, you know, there's no, there's no slash anything folder name slash whatever, because it is already in the same level. It's always with, it's always relative to this. I guess another quick lesson is once I go and import this into my map. So if I was to go to file, import and import that object and hit save, then I could actually go through and delete this object because it saved the file path and the shapes under my mapped01.i3d file. So you could actually go in and delete these now, but I like to keep them there for editing purposes later. I guess let's start out with one other thing first. There's two types of ob or there's two types of images that Giants Editor accepts. One of them is .png, one of them is DDS. PNG is a lossy uh, a lossless format rather, and it's best to use if you are editing or you don't know the final image. Once you have your final image, change it to .dds. So for right now, we're going to change this to .png. And the if the game actually detects if if the text actually reads .png on the on the file, it'll actually read DDS images. It'll look for a DDS image if it cannot find a PNG. And that really helps you during editing because then you don't need to change the file path extension. However, I do not believe it works the other way around. If that says DDS and you have a PNG image there, it will not pick that up. But you can leave it as PNG because if there is no PNG, like I said, it'll, it'll read the DDS. And that's the best practice for editing because you don't want to deteriorate your file while you are saving it and reading it and, you know, checking the, all the different things. So let's zoom in here and let's just change something simple. I, well, I don't know what to change this. Let's say, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> um, okay. So let's just change this to, here we go. So let's, Let's say that we are going to be open on Sunday as well. So let's just copy and paste that. This is a relatively easy change. And there we go. You're open the same time on Sunday that you are the rest of the week. So we are going to save as a PNG. And because we're still not sure. And there we go. So we can actually go through which one is the DDS. And just to show you, we can delete the DDS and it will work just fine. As long as you have the same name, you have to have the same name. So let's find our sign and there we go. So that is, we're open on Sunday now. And the, so let's say we are finalized. Let's go back into the, oh, no, that's Windows Paint. Why is paint.net? Oh, that's right. GIMP's my default. 
Well, why didn't it open with GIMP? I don't know. Anyway, let's go to paint.net. I actually like working with GIMP, but paint.net is a little bit easier. Anyway, let's say that we are all done here. We hit file, save as. Now we want to change to DDS. We have to remember to delete the old image. But we're saving as DDS. Here are some important things. If you are opaque, the, the two things that you want. Well, first of all, I'll include a... There's a little tutorial article on FSUK that someone else wrote. I will include that in the description. You can check that out for more information. That's where I got a lot of my info, as well as Bullet Bill. Because Bullet Bill actually kind of... Uh, doesn't contradict, but he has more up-to-date info than that article. And to put your map on a console, you have to use either DXT1 or DXT5. You cannot use three. And according to him, it's good to get into a habit of either using one or five so that if you ever do export a console, it's just better optimized for PC. And also you can export a console without having to go through and get rid of all the DXT3 images. I think DXT3, the tutorial talks a little bit more about that, the article. I think you might need to use that for semi-transparent stuff. But again, you can't use that for consoles, and we're not covering that now. This is either opaque or transparent, and we are opaque. The final thing we want to look at is you have to generate mint maps if it is any object on a map. You have to generate mint maps. This is actually the problem that I had on my Tazewell County map when I released it. I didn't know anything about mint maps. And apparently the file, I so the, what is it? The map thumbnail, commonly called the icon image, I think by default, let's look at our starter map. The icon, yeah. The icon and your map PDA and your map preview cannot, they must not have mip maps. However, everything else in this texture file, if it is a texture image used in game, it must have mip maps. I think the, 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 the tutorial article also talks about mip maps, and I believe they say, uh, as a general rule, if it's used on the HUD, then it cannot have mip maps. Everything else use mip maps. And that's basically what Bulletville has told me as well. So use those mip maps if it is an object. So we, just to recap, we want mip maps. We're saving it as DTX1 DDS file. So we're gonna hit okay. All right, and now we have to go back and delete our PNG file because we don't want duplicates. So our PNG is done and here we go. I will show you once again, that says PNG and we're gonna open this up to the sign and it will show our sign, our edited sign, even though it's a DDS and it says the file extension is looking for .png. It does not work the other way around, I believe. I'm not sure if it's good practice to change this back to DDS when you're done. I do not really think it matters since it works. I'm not sure if it takes an extra step of loading, searching for the PNG and then the DDS. So maybe it is best practice to change it back to .dds on the file path before you load it into your game. I don't really know. I guess it doesn't really matter because before you release your map, if it is best practice, you can go into your entire map and if it says .png, you can find and replace all to .dds. But anyway, all we have to do now is we are, remember we didn't change this sign. So we can actually use this sign here. And then let's say we want to have our grain elevator have an opening time. So let's do a file import and we are looking for opening times and let's move our sign right there. Now with a lot of signs, this sign actually has a backing with a lot of signs. It will show it as totally transparent on the back. So if you're looking at it from the back, you might not be able to see anything. I will show you that. That's especially the case with others. Okay, so there we go. So now actually we need to move that a little bit lower. And there we go. So I can fine tune that later. But now our grain elevator has opening and closing times and they are Sunday. So that is how you do opaque signs. Real quick, I'll touch on this. I won't, well, maybe not. It is basically the exact same process for this transparent sign. Uh, actually, let's stay in the editor. We don't need to exit. And let's change this to, uh, and remember, I always like to keep everything at the same level. Let's delete that. And sales service, we are going to also have to delete that. And you can see this one already says PNG, and I would be willing to bet, because it's coming from Bullet Bill, that this is a DDS image right there, DDS. And you can, let's go into opening this up with paint.net. Um, okay, let's just do a simple delete and change 
some simple text to let's see okay so let's just save that like that and remember this is we don't want an opaque sign we want dxt5 we want mip maps and let's hit okay now if we go out we can double check here before we import into the game and we shouldn't have a problem right there grain elevator so let's go back into our map and import the sales service sign all right and we have imported the ad strip let's uh, move it over here and there we go an ugly little grain elevator sign so like i said this is not too this is not to show you how to make text. Uh, yeah, that is a basic tutorial on how to get opaque and transparent signs and edit them on your map. So next time, I promise I will get into the animal tutorials and triggers. I This was just a little tutorial to help out someone who private messaged me. And well, actually, I probably shouldn't have said that. I won't always have time to do something like this, but this was a really simple tutorial. And I know it's something that I struggled a lot with trying to figure it out myself. The, the whole process of changing just the sign, but not changing the wrong object on the map, it can be a little bit confusing when you first start out mapping. So I just wanted to get you started with this tutorial. Anyway, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.